ಸುಮನಸಾರ್ಥಾಪಕ್ರಮೆ ಯಂ ನೃತಕೃತ್ಯಾ ಸ್ಯು ತಂ ನಮಿ ಗಜಾನನ ದೋರ್ಭಿರ್ಯುಕ್ತ ಚತುರ್ಭಿ ಸ್ಫಟಿಕಮಣಿಮಯಿ ಅಕ್ಷಮಾಲಾಂ ದಸ್ತೇನೈಕೇನ ಪದ್ಮ ಸಿತಮಿ ಚುಕ ಪುಸ್ತಕ ಚಾಪರೇಣ ಭಾಸಾಕುಂದೇಂದುಶಂಖಸ್ಫಟಿಕಮಣಿಭಾಸಮಾನಸಮಾನಸತು ವದನೆ ಸುಪ್ರಸನ್ನ ಕೂಜಂತ ರಾಮ ರಾಮೇತಿ ಮಧುರ ಮಧುರಾಕ್ಷರ ಆರುಹ್ಯ ಕವಿತಾ ಶಾಖಾ ವಂದೇ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ಕೋಕಿಲ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕೇರ್ಮುನಿಸಿಂಹಸ ಕವಿತಾವನ ಸಾರಿ ಕವಿತಾವನಚಾರಿಣ ಶೃಣ್ವನ್ ರಾಮ ಕಥಾನಾದ ಕೋ ನಾತಿ ಪರಂ ಗತಿ ಯಿಬನ್ ಸತತ ರಾಮಚರಿತೃತಸಾಗರ ಅತೃಪ್ತಸ್ತ ಮುನಿ ವಂದೇ ಪ್ರಾಚೇತ ಸಮಕಲ್ಮಶ ಗೋಷ್ಪದೀಕೃತವಾರಾಶಿ ಮಶಕೀಕೃತರಾಕ್ಷಸ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಮಹಾಮಾಲ ರತ್ನ ವಂದೇ ನೀಲಾತ್ಮಜ ಅಂಜನಾನಂದನ ವೀರ ಜಾನಕೀಶೋಕನಾಶನ ಕಪೀಶಮಕ್ಷಹಂತಾರ ವಂದೇ ಲಂಕಾ ಭಯಂಕರ ಉಲ್ಲಂಘ್ಯ ಸಿಂಧೋ ಸಲಿಲ ಸಲೀಲ ಯಶೋಕವನ್ನಿಂ ಜನಕಾತ್ಮಜಾಯ ಆದಾಯ ತೇನೈವ ದಾಹಲಂಕಾ ನಮಿ ತಂ ಪ್ರಾಂಜಲಿರಾಂಜನೇಯ ಆಂಜನೇಯಮತಿ ಪಾಟಲಾನನ ಕಾಂಚನಾದ್ರಿಕಮನೀಯ ವಿಗ್ರಹ ಪಾರಿಜಾತ ತರು ಮೂಲವಾಸಿ ಭಾವಯಾಮಿ ಪವಮಾನನಂದನ ಯತ್ರ ಯತ್ರ ರಘುನಾಥ ಕೀರ್ತನ ತತ್ರ ತತ್ರ ಕೃತಮಸ್ತಕಾಂಜಲಿ ಬಾಷ್ಪವಾರಿ ಪರಿಪೂರ್ಣ ಲೋಚನ ಮಾರುಡ್ ಮಾರುತಿ ನಮತ ರಾಕ್ಷಸಾಂತಕ ಮನೋಜವ ಮಾರುತುಲ್ಯ ವೇಗಂ ಜಿತೇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಬುದ್ಧಿಮತಾಂ ವರಿಷ್ಠ ವಾತಾತ್ಮಜ ವಾನರ ಯೂಥ ಮುಖ್ಯಂ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮದೂತ ಶಿರಸಾ ನಮಿ ಯರ್ಣಾಂಜಲಿ ಸಂಪುಟೈರಹರ ಸಮ್ಯಕ್ ಪಿಬತ್ಯಾದರಾತ್ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕೇರ್ವದನಾರವಿಂದ ಗಲಿತ ರಾಮಾಯಣಾಖ್ಯಂ ಮಧು ಜನ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಧಿಜರಾ ವಿಪತ್ತಿ ಮರಣೈರತ್ಯಂತ ಸೋಪದ್ರವ ಸಂಸಾರ ಸವಿಹಾಯ ಗತಿ ಪುಮಾನ್ ವಿಷ್ಣೋ ಪದ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ತದುಪಗತ ಸಮಾಸ ಸಂಧಿಯೋಗ ಸಮಮಧುರೋಪನತಾಕ್ಯಬದ್ಧ ರಘುವರ ಚರಿತ ಮುನಿ ಪ್ರಣೀತ ದಶ ಶಿರಸಶ್ಚವಧ ನಿಶಾಮಯಧ್ವ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ಗಿರಿ ಸಂಭೂತ ರಾಮಸಾಗರ ಕಾಮಿ ಪುನಾತು ಭುವನ ಪುಣ್ಯ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಮಹಾನದಿ ಶ್ಲೋಕಸಾರ ಸಮಕೀರ್ಣ ಸರ್ಕಲ್ಲೋಲ ಸಂಕುಲ ಕಾಂಡಗ್ರಾಹ ಮಹಾಮೀನ ವಂದೇ ರಾಮಾಯಣಾರ್ಣವ ವೇದ ವೇದ್ಯೆ ಪರೇ ಪುಂಸಿ ಜಾತೆ ದಶರಥಾತ್ಮಜೆ ವೇದ ಪ್ರಾಚೇತ ಸಾದಾಸೀತ್ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣಾತ್ಮನ ವೈದೇಹಿ ಸಹಿತ ಸುರದ್ರುಮತಲೆ ಹೈಮೇ ಮಹಾಮಂಟಪೆ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಪುಷ್ಪಕಮಾಸನೆ ಮಣಿಮಯೆ ವೀರಾಸನೆ ಸುಸ್ಥಿತ ಅಗ್ರೆ ವಾಚಯತಿ ಪ್ರಭಂಜನ ಸುತೆ ತತ್ವ ಮುನಿಭ್ಯ ಪರಂ ವ್ಯಾಖ್ಯಾಂತ ಭರತಾದಿ ಪರಿವೃತ ರಾಮಂ ಭಜೆ ಶ್ಯಾಮಳ ವಾಮೇ ಭೂಮಿ ಸುತ ಪುರಶ್ಚ ಹನುಮಾನ್ ಪಶ್ಚಾತ್ ಸುಮಿತ್ರ ಸುತ ಶತ್ರುಘ್ನೋ ಭರತಶ್ಚ ಪಾರ್ಶ್ವದಲಯೋ ವಾಯ್ವಾದಿ ಕೋಣೇಶು ಚ ಸುಗ್ರೀವಶ್ಚ ವಿಭೀಷಣಶ್ಚ ಯುವರಾಟ್ ತಾರಾಸು ತೋಜಾಂಬವಾನ್ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ನೀಲ ಸರೋಜ ಕೋಮಲ ರುಚಿಂ ರಾಮಂ ಭಜೆ ಶ್ಯಾಮಲಂ 
नमोस्तु रामाय स लक्ष्मणाय देव्य चै जनकात्मजाए नमोस्तु रुद्रेन्द्रय मनिभ्य नमोस्तु चंद्रार्कमरुत्कणेभ्य सर्वारिष्ट निवारक शुभक पिंगाक्षमक्षापहम स्थितान्वेषण तत्पर कपिवर कोटींदु सूर्य प्रभम लंका द्वीप भयंकर सकलद सुग्रीव सम्मादि समस्त देव विनुत काकुत्स्थ दूत भजे I see a significant improvement in everyone's chanting. Everybody is trying to chant. Excellent, very, very good. There are few of you who are giving up. I sincerely request. The other shlokas are very easy. Don't give up. The more you chant, every class will be chanting. There is no need to give up. Be calm. Practice. But the key to getting Sundara Kannam fluency is to practice. And I really appreciate everyone who is putting their chanting audios for me to correct. And Radha ji, thank you so much. I don't know if she is in class for all the help in correcting the audio files. It is really helpful for everyone to practice daily. Ten minutes it will take. That's all. This much easily we can do in our busy days. We can take ten minutes time to practice this and get it very good. Okay, but very nice. Many of you chanted very well and were keeping up with my speed. I actually deliberately increased speed and I saw that many of you were able to catch up. Excellent. So now we'll go to the concluding shlokas. We'll finish the meanings of the concluding shlokas today and hopefully because it is Taya Mavasa, I really want to start with the first shloka of Sundar Kannam. So we'll do that also if we are blessed today. Okay. So the concluding shlokas. स्वस्ति मार्गेण महिषा शुभमस्तु नित्यं लोका समस्ता सुखिनो भवन्तु काले वर्षतु पर्जन्य पृथिवी सस्यशालिनी देशो यम क्षोभरहितो ब्राह्मणाशुनाथ शतकोटि प्रविस्तर एक प्रोक्त Mahapatakanashanam. We'll see the meaning of this shloka before we proceed. We have not seen the meaning of this, no. So, charitam raghunathasya shatakoti pravistaram. Raghunathasya charitam shatakoti pravistaram. Raghunatha story, okay, is comparable to a hundred crores of aksharas or hundred crores of words. There's so many words to describe Raghunatha story. Valmiki wrote Raghunatha story. Tulsi Das wrote Raghunatha story. Kamba wrote Raghunatha story, right? And then we have smaller texts like Ramodantam, which contain Raghunatha story. Then we have Kali Das who wrote Raghuvamshan or Raghunatha story. Now tomorrow, if somebody else was to write, our Dr. Rangaji, whom I told you about in the last class, right? He has done his lifetime research in Ramayana, and he has brought out a ten-volume book series on Ramayana as it is. Okay, like how Bhagavad Gita as it is is there, no, in his God. Same way, he wants to say that every word of Ramayana, without any commentator's interpretation, how does it translate? So, like that, he has put out a ten-volume series, and we find commentaries on Ramayana, which number almost uncountable. There's so many important commentaries on Ramayana, sixteen, seventeen Sanskrit ones that are still found. Okay, and in our classes, we'll be using three of them. I'll introduce when we come to Sundar Kannam. I'll introduce which commentaries, three or four of them. I'll introduce the um, commentaries, but. The charitam is so vast. So what will we all think? Twenty-four thousand verses. Assuming you learn one verse a day, twenty-four thousand days. How many years? Can we finish? No. So that is why this shloka reassures us. Ye kai kam aksharam proktam. Every letter that you chant with bhakti of Ramayana, mahapatakan ashram will remove your problems, will remove your sufferings, will give you chitta shuddhi. And will ultimately bestow us with bhakti. Will make us qualified to call ourselves Rama Bhaktas. How? One akshara if we chant with bhakti. Okay. Tato Ravana Nita Yaha Pashtu Shloka. The if you say with bhakti also, so kind no of the author to say this. One shloka, one word you tell with bhakti, you will get your troubles removed. So that is the meaning of this particular shloka. Okay. It's clear. Can I move on summary meaning? 
uh, the Ramayana story is very vast with different versions and uh, it is very long also. But even a word of it when chanted with bhakti or even a letter of it when chanted with bhakti removes our sufferings. Okay. So the key is to be physically and mentally present. When we chant, even in this Ramayana class, one and a half hours if we are spending every Friday, that itself, that one and a half hours, if we allow ourselves not to get distracted by the doorbell and the WhatsApp ping notification and the family who's calling us, obviously family will always be calling us. If we are managing to give ourselves this one and a half hours quality time with Lord Rama, imagine uh, how nice it would be. All our pataka, all our problems will be removed. So this is the attitude that we must have when chanting Ramayana. Okay. Shrinvan Ramayana, next shloka. Shrinvan Ramayana Bhaktya Yah Padam Padameva Shrinvan Ramayana Bhaktya Yah Padam Padameva Sayati Brahmanasthanam Brahmana Pujyate Sada Sayati Brahmanasthanam Brahmana Pujyate Sada Shrinvan Ramayana Bhaktya One who listens to Listen, one, one who keeps listening to, it is not listens in the simple present, but it is present continuous. You should keep listening to Ramayana, Shrinvan. If you keep listening to Ramayana, okay, with Bhakti, the key word is Bhakti, Bhaktiya, with Bhakti. Even if you hear one Pada or one Pada, Pada refers to a quarter of a shloka. Okay, like Vishnu, Vishwam, Vishnu, Vashatkaro is a Pada. So one pada is one quarter of the shloka. Pada is just a word. Vishwam. Okay. One word. So whether you listen to one word or a quarter of the shloka, Sir Yati Brahmana Sthanam. He attains the sthana of Nirguna Brahman, Parabrahman. He attains Mukti. Okay. Brahmana Pujyate Sada. This Brahman is different from the previous Brahman. First Brahman in this shloka refers to Parabrahman. He attains Parabrahman. Brahmana Pujyate Sada. He is worshipped by Brahman. Now, this word Brahman refers to Lord Brahma and all the other devas that come after him. They all worship such a person. This we have seen in Soundarya Lahari also. Right? Mahasambhartagnir virachethi nirajana vidhim. Having transcended the states of Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, he reaches the feet of Ambal and after that all the other gods worship him. All the devas worship him. The Pranayagni itself worships him. So, that way, um, one who attains an exalted state is worshipped by all the devas and all the other gods. Okay, so the fact that Ramayana can confer bhakti is the purport of the second line of the shloka. So the complete meaning is one who listens to Ramayana with bhakti, whether a word or even a quarter of the shloka attains mukti and is worshipped by the other gods and the devas. I hope it's clear and I didn't go too fast. Right, next shloka. Next shloka is a very, very beautiful one. I've told the meaning of the shloka before, uh, but since there are a few newcomers in the class, I will repeat the meaning for their benefit. It is so beautiful that it is worth hearing once more, right? So that is why. Ramaya Rama Bhatraya Rama Chandraya Vedhase Rama Ramaya Rama Bhatraya Rama Chandraya Vedhase Raghunathaya Nathaya Sita Yapataye Namaha Raghunathaya Nathaya Sita Yapataye Namaha The shloka finds a place if the uh, Ramaraksha Sutra is very popular. Many of you have already learned the shloka also. When we learned Ramashtakam, I think I taught the shloka or I don't remember in which context I taught it or maybe for on Ramanavmi. I don't remember. But this shloka essentially encapsulates the names of Lord Rama given to him by different people. Who called him Rama? Who knows? Who called him Rama? Those who know the meaning, please share. Please share. Who called him Rama first? Dasharatha. Dasharatha. Correct. So, actually, when he was born, the, the four children were born and they were taken to their Kulaguru for the naming. Kulaguru is who? Vasishta, right? They were taken to the Kulaguru for naming. Vasishta looked at him and said, his face is so charming. Rama means Ramante Asmin Iti. Ramaha. Ramante Yoginaha. Ramante Asmin Iti. Are you all able to hear me clearly? Okay. Ramante Asmin means you, we all get 
charmed by the appearance of rama if you look at rama your eyes are captured your mind is captured so vasishta experienced this so he was the consultant who told dasharatha he is so charming name him that and so dasharatha said let him be rama okay rama has one more significance which i did not share in the earlier class because simply because i did not know it i did not read the ramayana commentary at that time so i did not know it since i know it now it will be value add for those who already know who already know the meaning of the shloka rama comes from the agni bija ram rama comes from which bija agni bija agni bija is ram okay agni bija agni itself has three properties okay what are the three things that agni does who can tell me what does agni do very good it makes it pure purifies very good and then what else does it do accepts our offerings ah uh, okay as habit ah uh, okay no not that function of removes agni, darkness hmm remove nashaka it removes darkness and then we have prakashaka nashaka three thing destroys also agni destroys whatever you give it burns so it has three qualities prakashaka brings light destroys darkness we all know by now the symbol of light and darkness light stands for knowledge darkness stands for ignorance by bringing knowledge darkness is destroyed that is the first function of agni therefore of rama also remember ram comes ram bija rama nama so rama gives us knowledge and removes our ignorance right we get jnana then next row nashakaha so destroys agni does the act of destruction here what is destroyed by rama the moment we think of rama now there is no way in which or we go to ayodhya and rama sees us okay or the moment we think of rama there are two ways in which we get god's influence in our lives one is by taking his name with bhakti second is by going to the temple and allow his drishti to fall on us so that some bhakti will come to us right we need both right so if both happens nashana happens what gets destroyed our future tendencies to sin and our bad vasanas they get destroyed our future and so tomorrow we will be better because we thought of rama today so he destroys our future sins our future papam he destroys and then he is pavakaha he is one who purifies he purifies us by removing our current sins it is like how we use soap to wash our body right in the same way and how all the bodily impurities are washed away our present sins are washed away when we take rama's name with bhakti so rama does three things prakashakaha nashakaha pavakaha rama okay so because ram comes from agni bija this interpretation was given uh, so now this is the name given by dasharatha to rama simply because he was so charming that anybody looked at him could not look away kausalya saw him the moment i mean kausalya obviously saw him from the time of his birth she loved the name rama but she wanted one more tag to it she added the tag rama bhadra bhadra means the auspicious one because she was labeled as a childless woman for so many years that she felt very hurt and very sad but rama's birth removed the tag and brought auspiciousness to her life by giving birth to a child whether it is a boy or a girl when we give birth to our, ch- our child our life's purpose is realized actually it is one of the duties that we have when we take the human form one of our duties is to give birth to another human who will carry the sanskara and the dharma forward it is all it is it's for sanskara it is for dharma that we have children we don't have children for artha kama right so kausalya was able to fulfill her purpose of dharma by having a child and therefore rama bhadra it doesn't matter whether the child is a boy or a girl the important thing is that the lineage is carried forward the parampara is carried forward that we can do only through children so rama bhadra then we come to rama chandra there is this lovely story no of how kaikey was actually very close to lord rama okay and he used to, he used to eat food only with her and not with his own mother every day she has to take food in one silver vessel and start feeding rama okay one day he refused to eat she kept asking what do you want what do you want he said i want the moon then she said she showed him the silver plate and she said see the moon what did she show show his own reflection so kaikeyi showed rama's reflection to him and said see the moon is here and then she fed him the food and so she called him rama chandra eva rama chandra rama who is the chandra rama who is the moon born in the surya dynasty he was called the moon because the moon is very cooling pleasant 
it removes the tapas and sufferings of those who we think of him therefore he is ramachandra he is not fiery like the sun that burns he is cool like the moon and blesses us always and so he is ramachandra so this ramachandra was told by kaikeyi next we come to vedhasa when rama went to gurukula with who vasishta he was very impressed because rama learned everything in one go one shot okay he memorized everything fast he knew the meanings he was able to understand he was a very very smart student school topper okay gurukulam topper so he got the title vedhasaha one who knows the vedas that name was given by vasishta to him and then the people of ayodhya were ready for the coronation of Ram rama this happens in ayodhya kand right they were ready for the coronation of rama so they called him the lord who is rama raghunatha the lord of the raghu dynasty who is the lord of the raghu dynasty rama so raghunatha was a name given by the people of ayodhya because he was considered the lord of the raghu dynasty by them then comes natha who will call her who will call him natha sita ah uh, sita devi my lord for her no qualifications the lord means rama only okay then sita yaha patihi who will call him that sita's husband no ravana would uh, rather forget the fact huh? no public not lakshmana hanuman public of, public of mithila all the people of mithila would only refer to him by his wife's name this story happened in apay dikshita's life also when he was uh, when he went to the village of his uh, wife uh, he was greeted there not as a great scholar and a vedanta teacher and a shaivaita guru and everything he was only welcomed as his wife's husband okay so he was given uh, taken in procession throughout the village because he was his wife's husband this story came to mind when i thought of sita yapati so sita's husband uh, rama as known to the people of mithila so these are to these i go okay that is the meaning of this um, shloka next uh, shloka we will learn any repetition required any points any doubts chanting clear i hope the next five shlokas kind of go together we will see all the five shlokas chanting and then see the meaning anvaya doesn't go together but context goes together so i'll take all the five and tell the meaning yanmangalam sahasrakshe यन्मंगल सहस्राक्षे सर्वेव नमस्कृते सर्वेव नमस्कृते यन्मंगल सहस्राक्षे सर्वेव नमस्कृते यन्मंगल सहस्राक्षे सर्वेव नमस्कृते वृत्रनाशे समभवत् पृत्रनाशे समभवत् तत्ते भवतु मंगलम् तत्ते भवतु मंगलम् वृत्रनाशे समभवत् तत्ते भवतु मंगलम् वृत्रनाशे समभवत् तत्ते भवतु मंगलम् इजी श्लोक वी चैट इट टुगेदर नो डाउट्स यन मंगलम सहस्राक्षे सर्वेव नमस्कृते वृत्रनाशे समभवत् तत्ते भवतु मंगलम वन्स मोर यन मंगलम सहस्राक्षे सर्वेव नमस्कृते वृत्रनाशे समभवत् तत्ते भवतु मंगलम ओके सो नाउ नेक्स्ट श्लोक वी विल लर्न लाइक आई सेड ऑल द फाइव एंड देन वी मूव फॉरवर्ड यन्मंगल सुपर्ण से यन्मंगल सुपर्ण से विनता कल्पयत्पुरा विनता कल्पयत्पुरा यन्मंगल सुपर्ण से विनता कल्पयत्पुरा यन्मंगल सुपर्ण से विनता कल्पयत्पुरा अमृत प्राथयान से अमृत प्राथयान से तत्ते भवतु मंगलम 
तत्ते भवतु मंगलम आमृतम प्रार्थयानस्य तत्ते भवतु मंगलम आमृतम प्रार्थयानस्य तत्ते भवतु मंगलम पुष्लुक यन मंगलम सुपर्णस्य विनता कल्पयत पुरा आमृतम प्रार्थयानस्य तत्ते भवतु मंगलम नो डाउट्स कैन वी मूव फॉरवर्ड आमृतोत्पादने दैत्यान आमृतोत्पादने दैत्यान घनतो वज्रधरस्य यत घनतो वज्रधरस्य यत आमृतोत्पादने दैत्यान घनतो वज्रधरस्य यत आमृतोत्पादने दैत्यान घनतो वज्रधरस्य यत आदितिर्मंगलम प्रादात आदितिर्मंगलम प्रादात तत्ते प्लीज ब्रेक इट देयर तत्ते भवतु मंगलम आदितिर मंगलम प्रादात तत्ते भवतु मंगलम आदितिर मंगलम प्रादात तत्ते भवतु मंगलम के एनी डाउट्स इन द सेकंड लाइन प्रादात तत्ते लाइक दैट वी शुड ब्रेक अप दैट वर्ड मैम प्लीज रिपीट वंस सेकंड लाइन ऑफ फुल श्लोक का फुल श्लोक का दिस वंस ओके अमृतोत्पादने दैत्यान घनतो वज्रधरस्य यत अमृतोत्पादने दैत्यान घनतो वज्रधरस्य यत आदितिर मंगलम प्रादात तत्ते भवतु मंगलम आदितिर मंगलम प्रादात तत्ते भवतु मंगलम टुगेदर आमृतोत्पादने दैत्यान घनतो वज्रधरस्य यत आदितिर मंगलम प्रादात तत्ते भवतु मंगलम त्रीन विक्रमान प्रक्रमतो त्रीन विक्रमान प्रक्रमतो विष्णोर अमित तेजस विष्णोर अमित तेजस त्रीन विक्रमान प्रक्रमतो विष्णोर अमित तेजस त्रीन विक्रमान प्रक्रमतो विष्णोर अमित तेजस यदासी मंगल राम यदासीन मंगलम राम तत्ते भवतु मंगलम तत्ते भवतु मंगलम यदासीन मंगलम राम तत्ते भवतु मंगलम त्रीन विक्रमान प्रक्रमतो विष्णोर अमित तेजस त्रीन विक्रमान प्रक्रमतो विष्णोर अमित तेजस यदासीन मंगलम राम तत्ते भवतु मंगलम यदासीन मंगलो राम सॉरी यदासीन मंगलम राम तत्ते भवतु मंगलम ओके राइट विल मूव फॉरवर्ड रितावस या वन क्वेश्चन आई एम सॉरी इन द फर्स्ट लाइन इट्स विष्णु और विष्णोर विष्णोर अमित विष्णो अमित बिकम्स विष्णोर अमित सो रेफा हेज टू बी एनाउंसिएटेड विष्णोर अमित तेजस यू से अमृतोत्मृतोत्मृतोत्मृतोत्मृतोत्मृतोत्मृतोत्मृतोत्मृतोत्मृतोत्मृतोत्मृतोत्मृतोत्मृतोत्मृतोत्मृतोत्मृत
ऋतव सागरा द्वीपा ऋतव सागरा द्वीपा वेदा लोका दिशते वेदा लोका दिशते ऋतव सागरा द्वीपा वेदा लोका दिशते ऋतव सागरा द्वीपा वेदा लोका दिशते मंगलानि महाबाहो मंगलानि महाबाहो दिशंतु तव सर्वदा मंगलानि महाबाहो दिशंतु तव सर्वदा मंगलानि महाबाहो दिशंतु तव सर्वदा फुल श्लोक ऋतव सागरा द्वीपा वेदा लोका दिशते मंगला महाबाहो दिशंतु तव सर्वदा श्यामला जी प्लीज आस्क Here it's given dishascha ye. It's not given as te. At least that's what te mangalani ye ritavaha sagraha dvipaha vedaha lokaha dishaha mangalani mahabaho dishantu anat te implied ago. Te reporta ye pota meaning lighta maro. Ye means those. Te means for you one of yours. Your mangalam may happen by all these things. Look at the meaning button. So, ye take nearby only in meaning which form only. It won't matter. But since let's do it consistently in class. So, if there's any difference, you make a change with pencil so that you don't affect the print. Just make it in pencil and chant like that. Throughout the Sundar Kanan, now you will find in many shlokas I was marking part of it as I found in different books also, and I will share them with you. Meanings won't change much, so don't worry. Chant with whatever I'm teaching just for consistency's sake. Note it down with pencil. Anyway, we're going to change it to te, ma'am. Yes, please. Those who have it as ye can change it to te. Meaning changes subtly, very small differences there in the meaning. That's all. Teing are the sorry for you, yours la for you. Okay. Uh, so now meaning. Now these five shlokas. Why I wanted to take them together is because if you noticed here in the fourth shloka. Um. And even in the fifth shloka, Rama is referred. In the fourth shloka, he is referred to as Rama. Fifth shloka, he is referred to as Mahabahu. Okay. Now, what what is the purpose? What is the meaning of the shloka? All these five shlokas are blessing for the Mangala. Are saying Mangalam Bhavatu, Mangalam Bhavatu. Uniquely here, somebody is blessing Rama. Like how Periyar were blessed, blessed Lord Vishnu. Somebody is singing one palanda for Rama and saying Mangalam Bhavatu, Mangalam Bhavatu for Rama. Who is the person? Kausalya. Exactly. Where? While Aranya? going for Aranya Kan, Aranya. Who is she blessed? Ah, uh, Hari Kanda. Excellent. Excellent. Aranya Kanda. Actually, this comes before Aranya Kanda. This comes before in Ayodhya Kanda. Okay, because that is where he goes for one of us. Okay, these are from taken actually from the Ramayana. In the second sarga of the Ayodhya Kanda, shlokas number, uh, I think twenty five or thirty or something in that region it comes because so soon in the second sarga of uh, Ayodhya Kanda only Rama has been told to go to the forest. Very quickly Ramayana moves there. Okay, and our Kausalya is faced with the prospect of sending a son away. So she pronounces all these benedictions on him. Even before understanding the meaning of all these benedictions, we'll wonder: Rama's blessings, blessings to Rama. Why do we chant at the ending of Ramayana? Correct, no? The answer to that: Why do we chant Pallandu when we're singing Pallandu, Pallandu, Pallayir, Pallandu? Why are we singing Pallandu? What does that mean, ma'am? Oh, that Not is good. A, oh, Thank you for asking, uh, because there are people who may not know. There is this Dravida uh, Veda called Nala Ira Divya Prabandham. Okay, Nala Ira Divya Prabandham is a body of literature written by Vaishnava uh, Alvars who have dedicated these to Lord Vishnu. Okay, we have seen in Vishnu Sasamam class many of their stories. Remember, from the Nala Ira Divya Prabandham, one of the important Alvars is Periyalva. He is the father of Andar. 
known known also known as earlier known as Vishnu Chittan. Okay, so when he was, I told the story in class also when in Vishnu Sastamam class when he was blessed by the king with this, all these rewards and all because he was uh, he he was only a garden grower. Okay, he was only a garden keeper. All this felicity of speech and ability to hold his argument in a debate and all came because of the blessings of Lord Vishnu. Because he got honored by the king and was taken in a palanquin throughout the city, Lord Vishnu came on Garuda to see his bhakta. To bless him. Aha, this my child, you have done so well. I'm so proud of you. Like how we all go, no? On the graduation day of our children, convocation ceremony, we don't miss, no? So for Lord Vishnu, this was convocation ceremony of Periyarva. So he had to see it. So he came down on Garuda. Our period where the moment he saw Lord Vishnu was overcome by joy. Like a father would bless the child, he pronounced benediction on Lord Vishnu. Palla and Palla and Palla Iratta and Palla and Tintol, Mani Vannaun, Sevati Purka. So essentially he was saying, may you be long lived. May you have uh, all protection from all the forces, all the directions. May your weapons protect you. May your weapons be long lived. Panches and Yampol, Palla and he will say, all the weapons he will name and say, Palla and to that, Palla and to that. May it live long. May, it, may its glory stand forever. Now, Periyalvar, overcome by fatherly emotions, said it. But why do we bhakta? Same way here, these five Mangalani shlokas on Lord Rama, uh, where, he, uh, where we, you know, when we see the meaning, we will realize the extent of her blessing for Lord Rama. If she is blessing like this, why are we chanting those blessings at the end? This is the question. I won't give answers like laddus. I'm expecting people will think, we'll see the meanings. Ha, yeah, Rekha ji. Hmm. Ma'am, does it indicate that if, uh, like if, uh... Like Loka Samastha Sukhina does it indicate like that, ma'am? If he is if he is he fine, the rest of the him. world will be fine. Ah, first point is that only. If he is fine, if everything is good with him, rest of the not that we have to worry about him being good. But we are mortals. We have mortal fears. We worry now will Hindu Dharma get extinguished completely. There is only one country where Hindu Dharma right now rules India. What will happen to Hindu Dharma? No, Rama has come in Ayodhya, we feel one measure of confidence. Rama is there, he'll take care. But we want Rama also to be Pallana, to live long, no? We want to bless him, no? That he may stay forever, get us Kashi, get us Mathura, get us all our temples back. We have this uh, inner desire, no? To see our, our way of life, our dharma protected. Correct? So, same way we want the Lord to be protected. Correct? Because if he is protected, everyone else is protected. Very nice. Anybody else have anything more to add, Radha ji? No, generally, in that, I have heard only, I See, like uh, this bad omen and all things, nothing should come off for God. That is one of the reasons why they say Periyalwar. Uh, because you are coming and everyone they might see you. Kandu so, yaar kandum So, Kandu like that they like a real affection. Yes. Kandu and one more thing, the dosha may be there in our bhakti. Okay, we are not pure bhaktas. If there is dosha in the bhakti, may it not affect my Lord. My, may my Lord, because ba who is Bhagavan? Bhagavan is Bhakti incarnate. Our Bhakti has created him for us. He comes in front of us because of the Bhakti that we have for him. Otherwise, where will he be? He will be in Saketa Loka. He will be in Vaikuntha. He is coming before us because we are chanting Vishnu Sasamam with Bhakti. We are chanting Ramayana with Bhakti. He comes. Let there be no dosha in my Bhakti that your appearance does not get affected. You come. You be with me always. That is another reason why we wish the benediction on him. For doshas in our Bhakti to be removed also. Huh? Priya ji? Ma'am, uh, that's what ma'am. For our verse, he is like, uh, he is like a child. So, they take over... Uh, we are so they they own him actually so Correct. they will take care of the child by rather than every alvar had a unique relationship with bhagwan uh, each one had like you know andal completely as her as her husband right Andal is the female that's what present in all of us. Okay, she is Prakriti, he is Purusha. Tirumangi Alvar fancied himself to be a woman and said, I am only the Prakriti, you are Purusha only. I am the female. He wore flowers in his hand and in his hair and he went, went around singing the pastorums. So for each person, the relationship was uh, very different. I missed a lot of people in the waiting. Ha, Radhaji, sorry, you had more to add. Unga voice, you're on mute. Uh, for pronunciation, when uh, I think uh, someone asked, you know, simple way for all this Samyukta I thought which I teach, 
see first uh, alphabet there are two alphabets or sometimes three four like in saundar lagri we had up there mm. so in which there are three so always one if it is two the first one if it is three the one and two they should not be pronounced as full uh, mm. ignata no so igna two are there in that so the first one always pronounces as ik ich it it that's all not as cha ta ta so keep the first one as ik or whatever it is you add the kalantam below and then the second one also is added and then you add the a e u so ignata one uh, he means in her so always see the first one is half half matra and only like it chit so if you do like that this is the toughest in sanskrit if you understand this uh, reading and chanting will become very easy two means keep the first as ikich three means keep the first and second as ikich ah. then add the third and then add the swara sure just okay. i thought simple one Thank because you. all of them are so interested in chanting no? yes. Yes. If these tips are given they might uh, yes. Thank you, Radha Ji. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All the corrections you are posting in the group. The <laughs> what? Whenever I can. Very big help, actually. Thank you. It's saving me time, and it's really helping. Thank you. Okay. So now we'll uh, can we come continue to the meaning. So uh, these are the benefits. These are the reasons why we chant a benediction to the Lord. So Yen Mangalam Sahasra Akshay. That Mangala which came to Sahasra Akshay. Who is Sahasra Akshay? One with thousand eyes. Who is question? Indra, 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 Indra only. Correct. So Indra, Indra is one of Sahasraksha because he has eyes all over his body. So the auspiciousness which accrued to Indra, Sarva Deva Namaskrite, the one who was worshipped by all the devas, Indra, the auspiciousness which accrued to him when Vritranashe on the destruction of Vritrasra. Okay, that Vajrayudha he had created with the bones of the Rishi. Remember, for the purpose Dadichi. of uh, Dadichi, for the purpose of killing Vritra. So when he killed Vritra, what did he do? He saved all the devas and he saved all the people on earth. So everybody was very thankful to Lord Indra. So the Mangala, the auspiciousness which came to him because they all blessed him. Tatte Bhavatu Mangalam. That Mangala made accrue to you, O Rama, says Kausalya. Okay, so may you also perform such heroic deeds where you destroy demons like Vritrasura, where you help the rishis, where you uphold dharma and may you also earn the same kind of auspiciousness is the uh, Vyangyartha or the deeper meaning of this particular shloka. She's not just saying bless you with this, but she's saying may you do this kind of deed. Kanchanaji, question? What, what is Sama Bhavat means? Which accrued, which happened. Which happened. Okay. So the Mangala or the auspiciousness which happened to Indra, who is worshipped by the Devas, on the destruction of Vritrasra, may it happen to you, O Rama. It's the meaning of the this line. Okay, meaning clear. Second line I'll move forward. Yan Mangala Suparnasya. Suparna is another name for. Ah, Garuda. Yes. Garuda. 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 Correct. Garuda. One with the golden wings. Suparna. Vinata Akalpayat Pura. His mother Vinata had pronounced and said it long time ago. So this whole incident of Amrita Padra, the Amrita churning of Amrita happened before Ramayana, right? So long time ago, when Vinata had pronounced a blessing on Garuda, Amritam Prathayanasya, for the purpose of getting Amrita to save her from the curse. From the uh, slavery, na? not curse, to save her because she had put a bet with, uh, she had placed a bet with the mother's mother of the Kadru, with the mother of the serpents, right? So she needed Amrita to get to, because the serpents asked for the Amrita, she wanted Garuda to bring the Amrita. So at that time she blessed him and said, May you go safely. So this shloka basically made that auspiciousness which accrued to Garuda on his mother's blessing when he went to obtain Amrita. For their welfare, accrue to you, O Rama, said Kausalya. This is the line meaning. The deeper meaning, may you be protected when you undertake dangerous tasks. May you be safe. That is the deeper meaning of this particular line. Okay. Shall I move forward? Amrito Tadane Daityan Ghnato Vajra Dharasya Yatu. The Daityas or the Asuras who were vanquished by 
Vajradhara, Indra, at the time of churning of the nectar. So, who were vanquished? The demons were, the Asuras were vanquished. By whom? By Indra. At the time of churning of the ocean for obtaining Amrita. At that time, Adithihi Mangalam Pradat, Aditi, the mother of the Devas and mother of Indra specifically, pronounced a blessing on him. Tatte Bhavatu Mangalam, may that blessing of a pleased mother come to you. So, Amritot Padne Vetya means at the time of churning of the ocean of milk for obtaining nectar, when Indra vanquished the Asuras, the pleased mother Aditi pronounced a blessing on Indra. May that auspiciousness come to you, O Rama, says Kausalya to Rama. Okay, here this is on achievement of difficult tasks. May you achieve difficult tasks and please my heart. Because when is a mother's heart pleased? When her ch son or child, son or daughter accomplishes something wonderful. Right? When they do something great, how happy the mother will feel. This is a happy mother's blessing. So she's saying, may that same kind of blessing accrue to you because may you gladden my heart with your valorous deeds. Okay, so that is a deeper meaning of this blessing. Ramayana is really a gem. It may look like simple Sanskrit words strung together with some meaning. But if we start going into Ramayana, it gives us valuable lessons for our life. How should we behave with our mothers? Make their hearts happy by doing good things. By standing for dharma, doing the right things, fighting against the bad, standing for good. And then what? Achieving valor, achieving glory, achieving fame. All these things which we can do for our mothers. Sreen Vikravan Prakramato Vishnoho Amita Tejasaha. When Vishnu, when Lord Vishnu in the form of Trivikrama. After Vamana, when he grew to a large size, he became Trivikrama. What did he do as Trivikrama? He stepped over the three worlds. So Sreen Vikraman Prakramato Vishnoho Amita Tejasaha. Amita Tejasaha means one with unmeasurable splendor, effulgence, one with unmeasurable effulgence. Tri, the Trivikrama avatar was so huge and so uh, luminous. It, is, it was really boggling for everyone to see his form. Okay, mind-boggling to see his form. So that Amita Tejasaha Trivikrama, when he crossed the three worlds, Yadasit Mangalam Rama, that Mangala which he got, that Mangala which accrued, may it come to you, O Rama. Okay, this is also again the meaning here is Trivikrama vik, tri Prakramataha. There is a, um, the Trivikrama Avatara has a significance of uh, the three states of Sushupti, Jagrat, uh, sorry, Jagrat, Swapna, Sushupti, one part, three Gunas, Sattva, Rajas, mm -hmm. Tama. Just like in the Tripura Samhara, the equivalent of Tripura Samhara, Vengyartha, is given to Trivikrama, Triloka, Prakrama incident. Okay, the deeper meaning of Tripura Samhara is transcending the three gunas and transcending the three states. Transcending the three gunas, Sattva, Rajas, and Tabhoguna. We are all under the sway of the three gunas. Correct? When the Rajoguna dominates, we get angry. When Sattva Guna dominates, we are calm, peaceful, happy, we attend Sundarakanda. And then when Tamoguna dominates, we nicely go to sleep and say, I will not get up and do anything useful. So whatever is the guna that is predominant at that time makes us act like puppets in the hands of the gunas, Maya. Okay, but Bhagavan, is he subject to the three gunas? Not at all. He is gunatita. Trivikrama therefore symbolizes the crossing of the three gunas. Just like Tripura Samhara symbolizes the destruction of three gunas by becoming gunatita. That is what Lord Shiva did. Second meaning, three states. The three states that we experience daily, Sushupti, deep sleep, Swapna, dreamless, uh, dream state, Jagrat, wakeful state. Even in the wakeful state, we are in a dream because this world is a dream. right? So to transcend all the three, we cross the three and then what state are we in? The fourth, namely Turiya, the state of Jnana. So may you obtain Jnana, O Rama, is the mother's blessing to the child. It is not just valorous deeds. It is, may you see, it is not like she is worried that he doesn't have jnana. He is Vishnu's avatar. He has jnana. But any mother will say, because he is also behaving like a human, he has fooled everyone around him, including his own mother. Yashoda at least got glimpses of the avatar, got glimpses of Lord Vishnu, right? When she saw the universe in his mouth and uh, the world in his mouth and things like that. But Rama fooled his mother thoroughly. Okay, get jnana, get mukti, go on the right path, my child. This is the blessing that she gives in the fourth shloka. Um, so, next we come to the fifth shloka. Ritava sagara dvipa 
Vedaloka Dishaschate. May the seasons, oceans, continents, Dvipa stands for continents. Continents, Vedaha, the Vedas, Lokas, the created worlds, Dishaha, the directions. May they all bestow auspiciousness to you. Te Mangalani Mahabaho Dishantu. Te Mahate Mangalani Dishantu. May it give you all auspiciousness. Sarvada always. So this is a prayer for protection from all the elements. And all the um, Adi Devika, Adi Adi Devika, Adi Bhutika Tapas. Adhyatika Adi, Adi Idrindra because external. Okay, so with the other two, external trias, tapas tapas. Adi Bhautika and Adi Devika. So these two tapas say protection from this shloka. This is the Vyangyartha of this particular shloka. So we see all the five shlokas bursting with meaning, right? So next we come to... Excuse uh, me, Mark, can you please uh, repeat the meaning again? Uh, of Ritava Sagra Dvipa. Only that, no? All the five are. Yes. Only that. Only ah, the all the five are. All the five are. All the five you have to wait for Shamla Ji's notes next week on the group. I'm banking on her. Okay, this also means not only Shamla Ji, everyone, whatever be the state of your notes, it could be in the form of cryptic notes, it could be in Telugu, it could be in drawings. If you see my notes, you will be scandalized. Whatever be the shape of your notes, please share it in the group so that others can also benefit. Let the pressure not be solely on Shamla Ji to ensure that the notes are perfect. I know she'll be like up to the mark and perfect, but others also can pitch it. I know RPG can do it. I know Rachna Ji can do it. Wait, let me call out more names. I have never seen Uma Ji's notes. I would love to see it. I'm sure Narayana Ji can do it. I'm sure Rashmi Ji can do it. Should I name more names? Harika Ji, I would love to see the state of your notes because I've never seen them. I'm sure you can do it too. Okay. Rekha. So please, ah, Rekha Ji. Ah, Rekha Ji, thank you. You volunteered, huh? Or Rajni Ji is volunteering Rekha Ji. Rachna Ji volunteered for Rekha Ji. Rachna Ji volunteered for Rekha Ji. I knew somebody else only had to do it because it was not Rekha Ji's voice. I thought it was a sister. Okay. So Rachna Ji did that. Okay. So anyway, it doesn't matter. Whoever, please share it so that others can benefit. Okay. So please. Yeah. Lakshmi Pri also, ma'am. Rama Bhakta. Ah, Rama Bhakta, please send your notes. If you have some songs also that you want to record and send, please send. We will all hear and enjoy. Ma'am, we have done that video of whatever shloka you have taught. It is Sarga 25, 32 to 36. Send the link to me. Shoka. I'll put it once and I'll share it. For you. Ah, yes, ma'am. Sure. Great. Okay. So, Ritavaha, season, Sagaraha, oceans. Joshika, pay attention right fast. Ritavaha, season, Sagaraha, oceans. Dvipaha, continents. Vedaha, the Vedas. Lokaha, worlds. Dishaha, directions. Go to kosha.sanskrit.today for any Sanskrit word where you don't know the meaning. Okay? Authentic source. Okay. Next uh, shloka. Shri Ramachandra Shrita Parijataha Shri Ramachandra Shri Ramachandra Shrita Parijataha Samasta Kalyana Guna Bhiramaha Samasta Kalyana Guna Bhiramaha Samasta Kalyana Guna Bhiramaha Samasta Kalyana Guna Bhiramaha Sita is not there, ma'am. I sent it down the group. Just wanted to check where is this actually. Even I am not able. Okay, uh, I sent it. I sent it in the PDF. It is there. It is I there in the first PDF. document what you had sent. First you, document from that it. only I am reading. You are seeing your Giri Traders book, I think, Shamla Ji. Correct, ah. Uh, it is there. Both of us, ma'am. Both of us have the same book only. That's yes. no, I'm sure. Get PDF for go. Ah, the PDF has got. It. First PDF. Okay. I will resend that. Not in the group, now. but it is in the PDF. No, ah, I will okay. resend that PDF to our group now. Please. Even press book doesn't have many shlokas, ma'am. It's okay. Later we will talk about the missing shlokas. Right now, let me teach because I really want to teach the first shloka of Sundara Kadam today because it's Sayyam Mavati. Okay. And Veli Kadavai. Okay. So, Shri Ramachandra Shri Tapari Jataha. निरंतरम् मंगलमातनोतु 
ಮಂಗಳಮಾತನೋತು ನಿರಂತರ ಮಂಗಳಮಾತನೋತು ನಿರಂತರ ಮಂಗಳಮಾತನೋತು ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಚಂದ್ರಶ್ರಿತ ಪಾರಿಜಾತ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ಗುಣಾಭಿರಾಮ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಚಂದ್ರಶ್ರಿತ ಪಾರಿಜಾತ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ಗುಣಾಭಿರಾಮ ಸೀತಾ ಮುಖಾಂಬೋರುಹ ಸಂಚರೀ ಕೀತಾ ಮುಖಾಂಬೋರುಹ ಮುಖಾಂಬೋರುಹ ಸೀತಾ ಮುಖಾಂಬೋರುಹ ಸಂಚರೀ ಕಿರಂತರ ಮಂಗಳಮಾತನೋತು ನಿರಂತರ ಮಂಗಳಮಾತನೋತು ಸುಗೇದ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಚಂದ್ರಶ್ರಿತ ಪಾರಿಜಾತ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ಗುಣಾಭಿರಾಮ ಸೀತಾ ಮುಖಾಂಬೋರುಹ ಸಂಚರೀ ಕಿರಂತರ ಮಂಗಳಮಾತನೋತು ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಚಂದ್ರಶ್ರಿತ ಪಾರಿಜಾತ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರ ಇಸ್ ದ ಪಾರಿಜಾತ ಟ್ರೀ ಫಾರ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಟೇಕ್ ರೆಫ್ಯೂಜ್ ಇನ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಶ್ರಿತ ಆಶ್ರಿತ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಟೇಕ್ ರೆಫ್ಯೂಜ್ ಸೊ ಫಾರ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹೂ ಟೇಕ್ ರೆಫ್ಯೂಜ್ ಇನ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ರಾಮ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ದ ಪಾರಿಜಾತ ಟ್ರೀ ಪಾರಿಜಾತ ಟ್ರೀ ಲೈಕ್ ಸುರತ್ ಧ್ರುಮ ವಿಸೋ ಇನ್ ದರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ನ ಸೆಲೆಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಟ್ರೀ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಪಾರಿಜಾತ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೆಲೆಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆಫರ್ ಅಸ್ ಆಫರ್ ದ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ದೇರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದೇ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಸೊ in shamanandika we had seen see celestial trees are good only for the celestials who really don't want anything but for us who is the celestial tree amban right because we don't have access to kalpadruma we don't have access to parijata tree who will give us everything amban same way rama rama will give access will give um, everything to those who pray to him who take refuge in him samasta kalyana gunabhi rama and endowed with all the auspicious quality he is very charming he attracts the mind he attracts our mind so one who attracts our minds with his um, auspicious qualities we are making a video on the 16 auspicious qualities of lord rama as told by valmiki at the beginning of ramayana rashmi ji has helped me with the editing of that uh, oh, she's just left the class and she's just coming into the class again uh, she's helped me with the editing of that shloka we'll hopefully release it soon okay so uh, those auspicious qualities are what draw our minds to him sita mukhamburuh sancharikah ambhu ambhoruh refers to lotus sita devi's mind rupaka alankara sita devi's mind is a, uh, sorry face is a lotus and who is rama sancharikah who always roams around the lotus the honey bee so rama is the honey bee who roams around or who always hovers around the lotus space of sita devi what beautiful poetry no so sita it sita yaha charitam that's what valmiki says i am should i call it rama story should i call it sita story or should i call it ravana vadha he asks okay then he decides i'm going to call it rama story but the hero is sita okay so sitambukam bhoruha sancharika the so, the bee which hovers around the lotus space of sita devi nirantaram mangala maturutu may it constantly give me auspiciousness okay may it constantly give me auspiciousness last shloka we all know dedication of everything and saying that everything is yours narayana okay kayena va we chant it together all of us know it kayena vacha manasendriyairva manasendriyairva buddhyatmana va prakrute swabhavat karomi yat yat sakalam parasmai narayanayeti samarpayami so everything obviously the conclusion of every ramayana class we will be chanting all these conclusion shlokas meaning of the shloka by my body mind words okay by my indriyas all my karmendriyas and my gyanendriyas and with my buddhi whatever i do according to my nature prakrute swabhava everything i dedicate to at i the of it oh lord narayana meaning of the shloka now before we go into sundarakandam first shloka we need to so these are the concluding shlokas and there is one shloka that we have to chant one second i'll give the sundarakandam introduction and then we will go to that uh, 
single shloka which we should chant i will tell why also this we should chant at home not in this is a single shloka but at home we can chant it just once maybe with a dhyana shloka but uh, it should be chanted at home i'll explain why but uh, first we will see sundara kandam basic introduction so um, as we just saw the meaning of the word rama hmm? what is rama ena mean rama means one who is captivating the mind of everyone one who captivates the mind right rama comes from agni bija this much we have seen what does the word rama ena mean ramasya charitanvitam ayanam shastram so rama ena is a shastra what does it do it is composed of a story it is his story charitanvitam ayanam it is a path to him it is a bridge which leads us to rama so rama ena is the bridge that leads us the jeevatmas to the paramatma who is lord rama so rama ena meaning if anybody asks you if you say na you are going to a rama ena class if anybody says what is rama ena we will all say story of rama we will say sita is the hero in that story okay all this we will tell ravana is the villain in that story all that we will tell to a child but one thing that should stay in our minds and we should hopefully tell also is that rama ena is the path to the bridge to rama it is it is what takes us to rama okay sita will become the jeevatma and rama is the paramatma kanki tadari shriya gave the deeper meaning of the first shloka already but i when we come to the first shloka we will discuss and we will ask shriya also to talk okay so now coming back to rama ramayana it is as we all know composed of six kandas and the uttara kanda after it there is a huge amount of debate on whether the uttara kanda is a part of the ramayana as i told in the previous class also the six kandas what do they uh, what do they signify bala kanda is a part now it starts with narada's enquiry from valmiki it starts with narada's telling of the sankshep ramayana and then valmiki composes the ramayana and he talks about the birth of lord rama the marriage of ram till then the um, balakanda goes on okay all this happens in the balakanda there is a benefit of chanting only balakanda of ramayana what do you think it gives us good children excuse me ma'am huh? ma'am ma'am if you don't mind here anjana here if you don't mind can you just repeat that ma'am narada telling this uh... how yeah. did this start off please i told this in the previous class uh mm. i not that yeah i just joined the, the last class is it okay, okay. i'll repeat i will go slower i will go slower please you are new i'll go slower definitely okay, sure. okay. so balakanda is a story of the uh, how ramayana came into being okay so it starts with the story of how ramayana came into being as i explained in the last class val uh, valmiki uh was curious to know who was the human being who had all the ideal qualities so he caught hold of the right person narada narada is the person who gives lot of good upadesha we give we have a very bad picture about him seeing many tamil movies and all and we also see certain puranas and think he is a kalaha creator and things like that but he is actually a great rishi he was a guru to sanakadi rishis also sarat kumara also they have also spoken to him there are many many incidences of him uh, giving great uh, advice to many people so narada told the ramayana story in 100 verses okay or rather in the first 100 verses the story comes in he didn't tell it in 100 verses the first 100 verses of ramayana the story of rama comes in and then valmiki sets out to write it it started with a curse the first line of ramayana as i told in the previous class was a curse but the curse became a the shoka that prompted the curse became a shloka as valmiki himself told it. and then we had the ramayana beginning okay so the first part of ramayana is known as balakanda this has a story of the birth of lord rama and it also has a story of his um, marriage with sita it ends there the benefit of balakanda is suputra prapti it gives us good progeny so just chanting the balakanda gives us good progeny if you are not able to chant the balakanda the first 100 verses of balakanda namely the sankshep ramayana if we chant it gives us the same benefit okay so 100 verses first 100 verses are known as sankshep ramayana second kanda is known as ayodhya kanda ayodhya kanda starts with the plans for coronating for crowning uh, lord rama and then his uh, kaikeyi's extraction of the two boons and then his exile all the way till paduka pradhana paduka given to bharata that is contained in the ayodhya kanda okay ayodhya kanda the benefit of ayodhya kanda is aishwarya prapti Okay, Vince says, "Aishwarya." Okay, so from the coronation 
till the going to exile and giving the padukas is ayodhya kand then they go to the forest aranya kanda aranya means forest aranya kanda exile in the forest probably happiest years of rama and sita's life they spent all that actually that time quality time they spent together they were in the forest no doubt but they were with each other and they were very happy so abduction of sita happens right at the end of the aranya kanda 13 years imagine of happy togetherness whether they are in the forest or not if you are together and you are happy what more do you need they really enjoyed and lakshmana also though he was separated from his wife he had quality time with his brother so the three of them were actually very happy in the aranya kanda they saw many places of pilgrimage met great munis and rishis there is so much of gnana given in daranya kanda upadeshas from rishis stories told by rishis to rama all that is contained lot of wisdom is contained in the aranya kanda okay and end of aranya kanda sita gets abducted okay aranya kanda let me just look at the benefit aranya kanda the benefit is moksha lava okay moksha prapti is the benefit of aranya kanda chanting next we come to kishkinda kanda this is where rama and lakshmana meet sugriva and then how through hanuman those who attended the hanuman chalisa class or listen to the lecture of the earlier live video recordings would know hanuman is the bridge to between rama and sugriva so through hanuman rama met sugriva then the alliance came about killing of vali action packed sarga of the ramayana kishkinda kanda the benefit of kishkinda kanda is nashta siddhi labham nashta siddhi labham getting back things that have been lost okay so that is the benefit of kishkinda kanda why because Ram, uh, two things happen one sugriva gets his kingdom but more importantly another important lost thing is found what is it no not in kishkinda kanda who what is sita. found nashta siddhi labha sita illa illa sita is not found in kishkinda kanda no but sita later is not on. found in kishkinda kanda hanuman no hanuman. kishkinda kanda itself hanuman gets back his powers yes rashadi hanuman gets back his powers because jambavan reminds him and so nashta siddhi labham happens so that is the nashta siddhi laba we are talking about the hero is born for the next kanda kishkinda kanda end the next kanda hero is born who hanuman he was always there but he became a real hero at the end of kishkinda kanda okay then sundara kanda quest for sita again one grand adventure okay this is the only significantly the only kanda of ramayana where rama has minimal role to play sita is a little active later but the hero of sundara kanda is hanuman okay when we see hanuman story in the next class we will understand a little more about his origin and his role also so uh, kishkinda kanda uh, sundara kanda benefit please wait i will tell you at the end then yuddha kanda yuddha kanda see he goes back uh, and tells that we have to get retrieve sita it's a matter of months if we don't retrieve her immediately ravana will surely make sure that she is killed so yuddha happens Ra rama crosses the ocean goes to lanka fights ravana is my voice breaking is my network getting uh, cut again yes, yes. ma'am i don't know what is happening around 8 815 It's not happening. I really will pray that I can teach a first shloka today. Okay. So, uh, Yuddha Kanda is a war segment, right? Where finally Sita is retrieved. So, the advantage of uh, Yuddha Kanda, chanting Yuddha Kanda, is Shatru Jaya. Shatru Jaya, winning over the enemies. Okay. Can I move forward? Am I clear? Okay. Last Kanda, Uttara Kanda. Uh, Uttara Kanda is the uh, events post. Um, the patta abhishekam uh, though since we since i'm not really getting into uttarakhanda right now so these benefits that we have seen all the benefits of these other kandas accrue complete sundarakhanda along with so what are the benefits benefits are satputra prapti aishwarya labha moksha labha nashta siddhi labham shatru jayam on top of it one more benefit gnana so gnana also accrues i have a feeling i've completely lost the class able to hear oh, but you are on my voice i've stopped my video i've stopped my video okay uh, everyone have your videos off we'll try it out and see how it goes because i want to move forward okay
everyone have your videos off we'll take the class only on with my voice right now so i don't like it at all i'll still do it okay so the benefit and uh, now am i audible you can use a um, you know the yes, raise yes. hand yes, option, yes. a thumbs up option great you can use a thumbs up option to communicate so balakanda shatputra prapti hi aishwarya labha of the ayodhya kanda moksha labha of the aranya kanda the nashta siddhi labham of kishkinda kanda Shatrujayam of Sudhakanda, all of it comes in Sudhakanda along with the extra bonus of Jnana. Okay, so these are the benefits of the different chapters of Ramayana or the Kandas of Ramayana. So having seen this, a little more about the... Huh? Uttarakanda, benefit, benefit of chanting, man? Uttarakanda specifically, you know, I personally do not subscribe to its uh, being of Valmiki's composition. I personally believe it to be a later uh, Grantha. But there are people who say that by reading Uttarakanda, again, Jnana will come. Okay. okay. Jnana and other Purusharthas also, they say. Okay, Jnana, Adi, they say. Okay, so... Yeah, yeah, all that is it. And Lavakusha Bharat is there in the Balakanda also. I'll tell you why in that later. Okay, so now... Mm -hmm. Why is Sundarakanda called Sundarakanda and more significant Vedanta aspects of it? I will cover in the next class only. We'll start the next class with that introduction. Now, because I wanted to start, till now, if the Kanda's meaning are clear, we will just start with the first uh, shloka of uh, Sundarakandam. We will see the meaning in the next class. One minute. Till now, am I audible? Okay. If I'm not audible, please interrupt me and tell me. Audible, ma'am. Audible. Great. So the first shloka, please take your Sundrakandam books just for the first shloka. Tato Ravana Nita Yaha Tato Ravana Nita Yaha Sita Yaha Shatru Karishanaha Sita Yaha Shatru Karshanaha Tato Ravana Nita Yaha Sita Ya Shatru Karshanaha Tato Ravana Nita Yaha Sita Ya Shatru Karshanaha Iyesha Iyesha Padaman Veshtum Padaman Veshtum Iyesha Padaman Veshtum Iyesha Padaman Veshtum Charena Charite Pathi Charena Charite Pathi Charena Charite Pathi Charena Charite Pathi Iyesha Padaman Veshtum Charena Charite Pathi Iyesha Padaman Veshtum Charana Charite Pathi. Once more, line by line. Tato Ravana Nita Yaha Sita Yaha Shatru Karishanaha Tato Ravana Nita Yaha Sita Yaha Shatru Karishanaha Iyesha Padaman Veshtum Charana Charite Pathi Iyesha Padame Anveshtum Charana Charite Pathi. Together. Tato Ravana Nita Yaha Sita Yaha Shatru Karishanaha Iyesha Padaman Veshtum Charana Charite Pathi. Once more. Tato Ravana Nita Yaha Sita Yaha Shatru Karishanaha Iyesha Padaman Veshtum Charana Charite Pathi. Okay. Any doubts in the chanting of the shloka? It's simple only. Ramayana is not very complicated to chant. If there's any doubt, please ask. Use the raise hand option. Not there? Okay. Very nice. So, what we will now do is we will see the meaning of the first shloka. Suti, question? Excuse me, ma'am. I'm uh, Vaishali here. Today is my uh, first class, ma'am. So I don't have PDF, ma'am, exactly because I'm not getting it in the net also. I had mentioned, no. Have you joined? Uh, so no, no ma'am. Today, today itself I have joined. That's what I'm blank, ma'am. But otherwise I'm getting... I'm Did understanding. Did you get PDFs? 
Yeah, ma'am. Did you get the Dhyana Shloka PDFs from Navya? Nothing, ma'am. I'm just today only I joined, ma'am. Today, yeah, today I she sent you all the old messages she didn't send you. I don't think so, ma'am. Please message and ask her for it. No, she has a whole lot of old messages. Let her send the whole thing to you. Okay, ma'am. At the end of the class, we talk. No, please. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for yes, No problem. No problem. Any other doubts are there in chanting of the shloka? None, right? Okay. What are no, ma'am? I'm I'm getting ma'am, but I'm not. I'm just I'm just blank because because I don't have any earlier like history like whatever shlokas you have given the exact uh, shlokas I don't have ma'am. Please stay back after class. We will have. A okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to on my video and uh, just see the network is great. Others also, few of you try to on your videos. Yeah, let's see how it's working and if it's not breaking. Okay. Otherwise, I really don't know whether I'm connecting or not. Again, once more, we'll chant. Tato Ravana Nita Yaha Sita Yaha Shatru Karishanaha Iyesha Padaman Veshtum Charana Charite Pathi Okay, so now... Mm -hmm. Between the repa and the na, there is a shakara. So it will be na. Okay. Fine. Now we will see the meaning of this particular shloka. Still the introduction, some more parts of introduction to Sundarakandam is not done. We will do that in the next class as I have already told. Purpose is to teach one shloka today. So the anvaya goes like this. Unlike in Saundari Lahari, it's okay. Don't write the Anvaya. Write the meaning. Because what is the benefit you're going to get from the Anvaya? In Saundari Lahari, we wrote the Anvaya because we wanted to understand properly word by word. Here also, I will teach word by word. But I will go in the order of the Anvaya. I will tell the Anvaya. But you write only the meaning. Don't write the Anvaya. The Sanskrit word, again, don't rewrite. It is a great tapasya for you to copy down Sundarakanda. So one thing you can do is you can write the shloka. Instead of just saying shloka one, you can say tatoravana nitaya, you can write later in your free time. Leave two lines and then write the meaning. Okay, if you manage to write the whole Sundrakanda once, it is very good. Anvaya means, okay, Anvaya. Anvaya means rearranging the words in the poem in a prose form. Because remember, it is a kavya. Kavya is poetry. Poetry will not be in the same <coughs> form as prose. In Sanskrit, we do something called Anvaya to rearrange. Where, what do we do? We identify the verb. Then we identify the doer of the verb. Then we identify the object who is doing the action. We identify other qualifiers like adjectives, adverbs, etc. Okay, it's a, I will do the Anvaya and give. In Saundari Lahari, usually everybody writes down the Anvaya form. Here I don't want because to save time. Okay, it's not required also. If you really want it, record, copy later. Okay, so Tataha Shatru Karsharaha. The verb here is yesha. Yesha means, yesha comes from the dhatu ish, which means to want. Okay, so yesha is wanted, resolved, made up his mind. Who? Shatru Karshanaha. In the first shloka, Hanuman is not named. He is not called Hanuman. He is not called Kapi. He is not called Vanara. He is not called anything. He is called Shatru Karshanaha, destroyer of enemies. So the Sundarakanda starts off with a bang. It doesn't call Hanuman with his proper noun Hanuman, which means one with a jaw, which is like, you know, Hanu, which is different, that kind of meaning. Instead, it directly says the destroyer of enemies. Our hero has a solid introduction. You can imagine the hero leaping in and destroying all the villains in one shot, okay, and then making his grand entry. Hanuman thus makes his grand entry, destroyer of all enemies. Enemies in Sonali automatically all of us should think of. What? Shad repose. Shad repose. Thank you, Shriya. Shad repose. Internal, external. <clears throat> right? Those of you who have not seen the lovely uh, play by Shashwata and the other children on the Shad repose, their origin, how does one lead to the other, are requested to watch it because it is it is like every child when they watch it, no, they'll realize the value of overcoming the Shad repose. So, Shatruka Shadha, destroyer of inner and exter outer, uh, external and internal enemies. Here in this particular context, Okay, I didn't tell you the commentary names. No, before I mention the commentator, I should tell you the commentaries. In Sundrakanda, we are following some, uh, we, I am following some seven or eight sources, but the main sources are five in number. The five ones are, there are three main tra traditional Sanskrit commentaries. One by Govindaraja, known as Bhushana. Okay, Bhushana is a heavy bhakti 
based commentary. I take it as my first source. Okay. The second one is Tilaka. Very, very commonly quoted, very popular. In fact, Sundar Kanda introduction when I give next class, we'll start with Tilaka's quote only. So Tilaka is very popular. Third one is Shiromani. These are the three. So you can write your, uh, like we used to do in Vishnu Saslamamna, Bhushana, Shiromani, these names you can write down. You can use your abbreviations and note later. Okay. So Bhushana, Shiromani, Tilaka, top three. Fourth one is another commentator called Tattva Deepika. Tattva Deepika gives a lot of emphasis on the Pratipadartha and the uh, relation between Anvaya and the relationship between the words and things like that. So Tattva Deepika, fourth one. Fifth authentic source I'm following is Dr. Ranganjee's Ranganjee's treatise on the Webolim Ramayana, the Ramayana as it is, the 10 volume series which I told you. That one we are using as a main source. Apart from this, Anantarama Dikshitar's uh, lectures on the Ramayana have been encapsulated in a book format in Tamil. So that also we are following. So these are the six main sources that we are following. Though Anantarama Dikshitar has quoted from the other first top three only mainly. Okay, so... Um, now coming to the meaning. Shatru Karshanaha refers to one who not only destroys inner and outer enemies, which is agreed by all the commentators. Specifically, Bhushanakara says that what is Hanuman's task? Finding Sita. Right? So, he, he, he's, he is the only one capable of destroying all the obstacles for that goal, to reach that goal of reaching Sita. So, by taking his name as Shatru Karshanaha, any act we want to do, we will get Karya Siddhi. Because Hanuman is the one who will remove all of like, like, Vigne, like Ganesha. We say, no, destroy my obstacles and move forward. Like that, this is our same Vakratunda Mahakaya, Surya Kodi Sarva, Nirvignam Kurume Deva. We are saying, no, same. He removes all the Vignas. So, like that, our obstacles, whatever obstacles, first of all, biting into or rather um, delving into the maha ocean of Sundarakandam itself is one big uh, task that should go smoothly. So all obstacles to that should be removed. Every Friday, all of us should not have any distractions. All of us should have videos on. All of us should attend the class without fail. All of us should be able to hear and write notes. All of us should be able to chant perfectly. All these uh, should be ensured it is in Hanuman's hands Okay, to ensure that. So Shatru Kashana, he destroys all the obstacles for whatever goal we have set in mind. That is why he Shatru Kashana says, Bhushanakara. Okay. When I say Bhushanakara, I refer to Govind Raja, who has written the Bhushana commentary. Okay. So, and then Ravana Nitayaha. See, so we have seen Tataha Satru Kashanaha thereafter. Tataha means thereafter. Tataha is Mangala Arte Takaraha. Any grantha which starts with the is Mangala. Says all the Kavya professors. Okay. So if you read any Kavya text, it will say if you start with the, it is Mangala. So what is a Tataha? Tataha means thereafter. Thereafter what? After Jambavan told Hanuman, you are the one capable of leaping across the ocean. After that, this happened. So we are in that context. That is the last part of Kishkita Kanda. This is the first part of Sundra Kanda. After this lecture, what happened? Okay. So Shatru Kashanaha, the destroyer of enemies. Ravana Nitayaha Sitayaha. The Sita who was abducted by Ravana. Clear meaning, no? Ravana Nitayaha Sitayaha. Padam Anveshtum. To search for her situation. To search for where she is. To look for her. Okay? To look for her. Padam Anveshtum. To look for her. Charana Charite Pathi. Charana Charite Pathi. Iesha. Ah. He was resolved to go on the path. Pathi refers to on the path. It's not pathi as in husband or chief. Pathi comes from path. path. So on the path of the charanas. The path travelled by the charanas. Who are the charanas? Charanas are wandering minstrels who sing in the sky. So he resolved to take the aerial route. That is the meaning. He resolved to take the aerial route to find the place of Sita. Okay, this is the basic meaning of this shloka. So, for Ramakarya Siddhi, inspired by the words of Jambavan and at the request of other Ravanas, Hanuman decided to cross over the ocean, take the aerial route, in order to find Sita, who was abducted by Sita, who was abducted by the by the ten-headed Ravana. Ma'am, who the, did you say are uh, Charanas, ma'am? Charanas are wandering singers. Their job is to go around singing like how Narada sings, no? But Narada is also a jnani. Charanas generally sing. So they are always in the sky. Okay, so Charana Charite Pathi means the aerial route of taken by the Charanas, taken by the celestial singers. Now there is a deeper meaning which we will uh, 
feeling of see i think in the next class sorry to interrupt uh, ma'am the meaning hmm. of padmanveshtu padmanveshtu to search for the place to search for where she is okay now uh, this shloka uh, there is something called the navaratna sundrakandam right with rajaji was also sharing the other day navaratna sundrakandam this is the first one manikya this shloka as and when they come i will keep pointing out please write against this shloka this is the manikyam manikyam ruby no it is called in uh, english i think the ruby the, in the navaratna this is the ruby shloka there are nine such very very useful important ones which teaches things what does this shloka teaches we will just see when we see the deeper meaning in the next class we will see the deeper meaning in fact after learning a little more about why sundara kandam what is why is it called sundara that also we will understand and then come to the deeper meaning of the first shloka that will make more sense and we will also see harman's charitram in the next class okay so with this we will uh, close today's session by chanting the concluding shlokas ma'am one minute can you, know. you give us the summary meaning ma'am or can if i can read the, can you please correct it ma'am just uh, one line ma'am i'll i'll give the i'll give the summary meaning i'll ah. give the summary meaning okay. in one line okay after um after being inspired by the words of jambavan the destroyer of force hanuman resolved to take the aerial path to search for sita who was abducted by ravana resolved to take the aerial path to search for sita who was abducted by ravana if you already have a book which has meaning and you don't want to rewrite the whole thing then what you can do is just jot or down whatever points are in addition okay and then cross reference and read okay if you feel you are able to write it write it nothing like it because if we write it we get all the information in one place if you are able to write fast do it if you want to cross reference please do that kanchana ji you have a question ma'am sorry to interrupt uh, you said the commentary by bhushanakara tilaka and the third name i did not get ma'am shiromani 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 oh. and then tatvadeepika fourth one fifth Tatva one uh, tatvadeepika or tatvadeepika okay tatva tatvadeepika So fifth one, uh, fifth one by Dr. Ranganji, Vibolim Ramayana, Ramayana as it is, and then the sixth one, Anantarama Dikshita. Udra grato grivo, gavam patirava. Let me mute the person over it. Okay, ha. Huh. Now we'll chant the concluding shlokas together. I was supposed to teach that single shloka, and I forgot that. I'm going to take five minutes and teach that shloka because we must not start Sundara Kanda without learning that shloka. uh my problem when starting the sundara kanda class was this that i did not have mantra upadesha of the rama shadakshari mantra rama shadakshari mantra is considered to be mandatory for one who chants sundara kandam for bhakti with bhakti okay so none of us have the upadesha to man- rama shadakshari mantra from a guru you have to learn so i went and uh, got it clarified from one of my teachers uh, she is my narayanam guru her name is uh, dr uh, mrs shamla kanan so she um, her name is also mrs uh, no her name is mrs shamla ganeshan i'm sorry her son's name is kanan so her name is mrs shamla ganeshan and she told me that uh, there is one shloka from the ramayana that you must chant to get the same benefits as chanting the rama shadakshari since none of us have the rama shadakshari upadesha we all must chant this shloka please chant it at least once chant it as many times as you want because it is equal to chanting the mantra okay i'll teach the shloka just repeat after me i'll send the shloka in the group later and we'll learn the meaning also in the next class as a part of our dhyana shloka we will chant it every class dharmaatma dharmaatma satya sandhascha satya sandhascha ramo ramo dasharathir yadi dasharathir yadi ramo dasharathir yadi ramo dasharathir yadi 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 paurushe cha pratidvandvaha paurushe cha pratidvandvaha paurushe cha pratidvandvaha 
पौरुषे शरैनम शरैनम जहिरावणी जहिरावणी शरैनम जहिरावणी शरैनम जहिरावणी शरैनम जहिरावणी शरैनम जहिरावणी लाइन बाय लाइन रिपीट धर्मात्मा सत्य संधस्च रामो दाशरथिर यदि धर्मात्मा सत्य संधस्च रामो दाशरथिर यदि पौरुषे चा प्रतिद्वंद्व शरैनम जहिरावणी पौरुषे चा प्रतिद्वंद्व शुभमस्तु निमस्ताे वर्ष तो पर्जन्य पृथ्वी सालिनी शोभरहितोंघुनाथस्थनाथस्थनाथस्थनाथस्थनाथस्थनाथस्थनाथस्थनाथस्थनाथस्थनाथस्थनाथस्थनाथस्थनाथस्थनाथस्थनाथस्थ